what I will talk about today is basically how we made these templates that you will find in the uh, provisioning service. Um, because they use basically all the latest and the greatest uh, little tricks that you can do with, with client-side pages. And uh, I will talk you through how we actually build those templates. So here you have an example of this one of the one of the templates applied to a site being the marketing landing, and and what you see here is among others that the header is a bit different. Uh, the header has a background now, and if we scroll down, you'll find a section here with a background, and if we scroll a bit more down, you find another section here with a different background. And here's a, by the way, this section also has a background. You see there's a bit of a light gray. I hope it translates. Uh, Good on your screen. So, how did we create these uh, these pages? So, it's not that we started to like, okay, we have a picture, and then we start to build the pages by scratch. No, we actually started with existing sites. So, there was a designer that um, went to a SharePoint site and started to build that site um, as it should be. And then we got access to that site, and we were able to to get the data out of that site and extract basically a template from that number. Now, if there are multiple pages in a site, <clears throat> you might be aware that the provisioning engine currently does not export all the pages. It only takes one page. So we actually have a solution for that that I will demo in a minute. So <clears throat> we have existing pages, and um, so you're happy with them. You, you added all your, your web parts on it, and um, you did all the settings and the, the background colors of the sections and everything. And now how you get these this page into a template. Well, this is specifically the home page, but uh, what I will show you now works basically with, with every page. Um, what I'm using here is uh, PNP PowerShell, and I'm already connected. Now, I'm not connected to the correct site, so let's connect to, well, we'll use the demo site actually here for, as a demo here. Here, I'll, I'll just build a, uh, a demo page just for the, uh, for the sake of it. So, call it, typing carefully, demo. Text, hello, PNP, and publish. Now the page is there. Going to PowerShell. Connecting to the site. Export, PNP, client-side page, demo. And what we now did is that we generated a PNP provisioning template just for that page. So all the properties that uh, are in that page are being exported here. And you see, for instance, here we have the header, we have any security if, if, if applicable, we have the sections, we have the web parts in there, etc. So what you can do now, if we look at, for instance, that uh, marketing landing page, this one, and I go again to Visual Studio because I happen to have that open in Visual Studio here. There we have the client pages, client side pages section, and I basically just copy that that XML from that single template that is generated and paste that into my client side pages, and that how we, this is how you can build up the your basically all your pages in your site uh, and add that to your template. Now, if we look at the XML here of the provisioning engine. Uh, there is an, a couple of things that we added since the last release, and that is, for instance, this one, the background emphasis. So this is uh, neutral means it's the light gray. But you, there's more options there. There's like no, no background emphasis, light gray, soft. It takes the primary color of your theme and makes it a tiny bit lighter. So that's the soft emphasis. And strong emphasis is basically the main uh, primary theme color uh, of, the, of the theme you have applied. Um, so. You can do that basically on uh, on every section. Set the the background background emphasis to to like neutral, for instance, if you want to. Uh, a thing that we also changed in the engine here is that we now allow you to set the header background. Here you can set the background emphasis to strong. That's where that strong orange comes in. And a very interesting change we also made to the engine to make your pages look better and your site in general look better. We allow you now to provision a theme to a site. So in the earlier um, versions of the uh, tenant template, we only allowed you to provision teams to tenant levels or tenant themes. So the theme would be available for all site collections. Um, now we can actually provision a theme uh, directly to a site collection. And it's a standard uh, JSON theme. 
and uh, or modern theme, or whatever you want to call it, and provision that directly to only that specific site collection. It will be available in the site collection. We even allow you to, if you want to, if you're not interested in providing your own theme here, but you want an out-of-the-box theme, like for instance the orange theme, you can just write orange here. And then leave this part empty, take this away, and the result will be that you will just get that specific out-of-the-box theme uh, applied to it, uh, to your site. So there's a nice addition um, to make your life a bit easier and uh, make your sites uh, look a bit better. So um, when you build your whole template and everything has been uh, written down in the XML and you have all your resources uh, available, uh, how do you package this now all together? Because uh, you notice that, uh, for instance, here we have like images in there. There's an animated GIF here. Uh, there's more images, etc. So how do you wrap that all together in a package that you can actually take with you and, for instance, give to a customer or whatever? Uh, and that's the, the where the PMP format comes in. And if I go to, for instance, the, the repository uh, that is publicly available already, um, uh, where we have all the templates available, uh, so the ones from the provisioning engine, and we go to the marketing landing one, you find um, the, there's this PNP file here. And this is actually the file containing all those uh, client side pages with the sections and everything set and uh, and the images and etc. And where does this come from? But this is located in this source folder. So if we go to the source folder, there's a template XML file and there's an assets folder. And in the template itself, if you look in the template file, <clears throat> you'll find a um, files section. If I can find it here, there's a file section there, for instance, references to this asset folder here. And then where do we copy those files, the images, etc., that are located on the page. So if you have that whole structure done and you can easily now test this template from this folder, you can say apply PNP tenant template and it will start to provision this template to your currently connected site. But if you're done and everything is okay, you just basically say, okay, my template, I'm going to read that one PNP tenant template into this variable. So now if I just output this variable to the screen, there is my whole template, and this is an object model, so I can actually dive in, into the, the sequences and into the templates and modify things even if I want to uh, by uh, modifying the object. Uh, but uh, most of the time you just read it into a variable, and then you say save PNP tenant template. Out, and the template is your template variable, and then out to like PNP, uh, file.pnp, whatever file name you, you use, as long as it ends on a PNP. You see the uh, files it starts to process, and the result is, if you look in the file system, there's this PNP file. And this file contains everything. It contains the template, all the resources that you referenced to in your template, etc. So the provisioning engine, if you do apply PNP tenant template and you provide this file as an input, it will just do the same thing as if you would have this file available with your assets folder. But now it's nicely one file that you can move around from one side to the other. Now, very recently, in the client side pages, uh, a new uh, functionality was introduced, and that's the ability to use templates. So if we go to uh, the site again, and um, and if I create a new page, you might have seen it. Um, if I go to the uh, the root of the site, and if I create a new page at this uh, location, I will be asked for. Uh, what type of page I want to create, a blank, a visual, or basic text. You can create your own templates now. So if I go back here and I go to pages, and then I could have done this from here too, actually, it doesn't matter where I do it, and I create a new site page, and I call it uh, template one. And I can add some text there if I want to. It doesn't matter. I can fill it up. I can put web parts on there, everything. I can change the layout. I can change the, the background color and everything. If I click Publish, there is a option here, Save as Page Template. Now it's a template. So if I um, save this page, name cannot be long. Okay, I have to give it a template one. Save it as a template. Go to my home page, create a new page. That's not a new plan. New page. There is my template. If you want to package 
a client-side page in your provisioning template and make that a, a template uh, on the on the site, so a page template, it's actually very simple. In the template itself, in the PNP provisioning template, on the client-side page, we have a property, promoters template, true. That's the only thing you have to do. That's the only thing and you have now, to do. And now, from now on, um, it will save this uh, page to your site and it will put it in the correct location and it will be made available as a provisioning template. From uh, PMP PowerShell, it's also very simple. You can actually, if I go back to the uh, demo for so we have a bit more screen estate here. If I say uh, get uh, PMP uh, at uh, 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 PMP client side uh, page name, uh, we call it on template two, layout type is not interesting, promote as template. And that's all there is to do. And it will create a new empty, in this case, empty client side page. And it saves that one as a template. What happens behind the scenes, if you look into the pages, uh, side pages folder, you notice, and in that template folder, you see my two templates files that I just created. Notice that it is not enough for you to create a templates folder and just put pages in there. Um, you will have to either use the, the PNP Sites core library or PNP PowerShell or the user interface of SharePoint to create a template because there's a bit more going on behind the scenes than just creating a templates folder. Um, so um, we do the plumbing for you uh, by using, uh, if you use PowerShell or uh, Sites core, and also if you use the UI, they do the plumbing for that for you too. Um, but this is, uh, this is the idea behind templates. It's very simple, very easy. Uh, you can easily package your templates. And notice that the templates are site scoped, just available in your site. They're not like tenant scoped. Uh, they're available in your site. Now, Irvin, on, on that topic which is mentioned, so let's clarify what it means for everybody. So the templates, page templates are site scoped, and that means that if you want to have the same template in multiple sites, what do you need to do? You provision a template to multiple uh, sites. Exactly, exactly. You so build basically, a single template and you apply it to all the sites where you want it. So yes. for instance, what I would do is I would create a template with only my templates in there, call it my templates template, and apply that to every site collection where I want those templates to be available. Yes. If you make a change to your template, then modify the template in the provisioning template and reapply those templates um, to your site, and we will overwrite the existing templates. Yeah. And that's really the reason why we wanted to talk about the page templating and how easy it is to promote uh, page as a template here as well. Now, there's a question from Leo around, is it a site in a web or a site collection? It is actually a site, which is a web, so a site. It's, it's SharePoint terminal. It's, a, it's, it's an end user site. It's Correct. a developer web. Yes. Yeah, that's one way of putting that. Absolutely. Um, and then they will say uh, there was just a random comment on can I open this template on the Visual Studio Code? And answer is yes, it's an XML template. Uh, there's no requirement of using Visual Studio. No, here, but okay, let me explain that. The reason I opened it in Visual Studio, the real Visual Studio, is because you can actually um, associate a schema with it. So you get like completion here. You get like the the, the, the pop-ups and everything, and the the the, the attribute uh, examples and everything. That kind, of, those things like content type ID and publish, because they are two attributes that we can provide on this uh, on this element. There is unfortunately no XSD schema handling available or easy XSD schema handling available for Visual Studio Code. That's why I opened it in Visual Studio and not in Code. But it's just a flat XML file. Nothing specific there. You know. And, and then there was a comment on could we have a flag on the export BMP client side page to spit directly the template, so not just the page. And yeah, that could be one yeah. way of doing that. But is it a, the, the, a really a case where people want to create a temp page specific template? It actually does. Um, we don't have it. Actually, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. There's no, there's no flip, there's no switch. If I, if I do export uh, this for the page, you see, it is a full template. Yes, it is. Actually. It actually yeah. exports, it exports a full template. Yeah. Which basically is so then yeah, serializable, and then you're able to 
uh, and uh, able to package that as a PMP file. Now, coming back on that one, just one clarification as well, now that we're getting this recorded. Now, if that page has references to images, what do you, you need to explicitly then pull them down and fix the URLs, right? So this one doesn't yes. do that? Yes, correct. Okay, correct. excellent. Yep. So we got that one covered in the video as well. Uh, I think that's it for the, the active questions. Uh, uh, There's a the question here about scope undefined. They can very briefly access the last, then, then it's over. No, there was the, another one, really good question, actually, because uh, um, before we go to the scope, uh, well, scope undefined, can you take that one? Yeah, so scope is an ability in the engine to restrict your template to the root web or any web. Um, we don't know where you come from with the, with the template. We don't make the assumption the scope is undefined. That's basically it. But you can restrict the template only to work on the root web and only, or on also on subwebs. That's yeah. basically what the scope parameter does. Um, and then there was a question from uh, Govri: uh, Does export PMP client side page export SPFX web part among along the page? And that's a really good question, mm, just to clarify that. Yes, and it does not. Well, yes, it does. Again, it, it it oh SPFX web part. Sorry, I miss miss. I uh -huh. somehow in my head classic web part in my head. I don't know where yeah. that came from. Yes, it is actually exporting the SPFX web part. Um, yes, any web part that will SPFX web part will be exported here as a control, and including all the properties and everything you set on that web part. Yes, including but it's not ones, including. But obviously, you need to have the SPPKG package as a separate one. Right. 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 And this is something that yeah, we should actually yeah. add, Aaron. The package. Yeah, we should should we can easily detect mm. like there's a custom could, package we use and try and just try to extract. You can it detect as well. if it's a custom web part and include the package yeah. there too. Yeah. Yep. Yes, indeed. 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 Good point. Good. Uh, let's do some live specking. Um, uh, no, just kidding. And thank you, Erwin, for that one. Mm -hmm.